I don't even need a formal introduction this week. I'm really pissed and I'm gonna express, I'm gonna try to express little emotion. I'm trying to, I'm really losing patience, but let's get to the show. So first off, the Colts defeated the Bears 19 to 11. You heard that, 19 to 11. Low scoring game, the offense barely had any production and the defense was starting to get tired out there. No, as a matter of fact, they were tired out there. Literally the offense could not find its groove and it found its groove with two minutes left to go in the game. You gotta be kidding me. So, to get it right, 58 minutes and three points. 58 minutes and three points on national television, on CBS. Let's get it right. 58 minutes and three points. And then next you know they score a garbage time touchdown to Allen Robinson. Oh, just to make things a little sweeter and better. Unacceptable. Let's go, let's go, let's get to my analysis. The Bears struggled big time in the first half. They only managed to score a field goal. A field goal. And like I said, I, I don't know how I don't know how many times I have to say it, but three points in 58 minutes on a nationally televised game for the NFL. That's not gonna win you games. It's not even gonna win you it's not even gonna win you low scoring games either. You're likely to lose if you only score three points in 58 minutes. You're very likely to lose. And then the defense, they were getting ran over in the first half. Like, Phillip Rivers was not, I don't, he wasn't owning them, but Phillip Rivers was simply playing boring football, which, which helped them win the game in the first half. The, the Colts practically won the game in the first half, because guess what? They, only, they had four field goals and a touchdown, which equals to 19 points. Let's get to let's get to my next subject before I get sick. Whew. Simply put it, terrible day for the offense, plus a a mediocre day at best for the defense. That's not going to be a winning formula. It really isn't. When the offense finally got going, it was garbage time. Nick Foles was struggling. He was he was he was he threw an interception. He was um how do I put this? Yeah, he was throwing interceptions. He was throw. He was underthrowing. He was overthrowing. He was just really inaccurate. And although he had 250 passing yards, it was not in time. Them 250 passing yards did not come in time for this out for the outcome of this game. And then another thing that really concerns me: the offensive line was. Damn it, they were un they were unproductive. They were they were just that terrible. They look 4.7 yards per you know yards per play. 4.7 yards per play. That's not winning you football games. And then the other thing is, from the defense's per perspective, sloppy tackling, really, sloppy tackling. And I I'll admit this. They, they got us pretty good because guess what? The, the offensive line for the Colts, according to Pro Football Focus this year, they ranked third in the NFL. So, you know, I'll cut them some slack there. But then with the tackling there, they were like uh, missed tackles. Like Khalil Mack was missing some tackles. Kyle Fuller, Jalen Johnson, they were missing tackles. And speaking, and speaking of them two cornerbacks, damn it, they got dusted. They got dusted a lot during this game. And although although the score doesn't show for itself, they got dusted a lot for this game. And they allowed, they allowed key completions on third down, which made them lose the game. So my point is, when you have sloppy effort from both sides of the ball, you're not winning football games. I don't care if you're in high school. I don't care if you're in college. I don't even care if you're in the NFL, CFL. XFL, I don't care. You're not going to win. You're not going to win anything. My point exactly. Let me go on and get to, let me go on and get to player stats because 
Okay, let me just go in and get to player sets. This is when I calm down a little bit during my show. This is when I calm down. Nick Foles, 26 for 42, 249 passing yards, one touchdown, one interception, with a 76.4 pass rating, which is very mediocre. On the other hand, Phillip Rivers, that trash talker, 16 for 29, 190 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions, and he had an 86.4 passer rating. He had ball management. He had a ball managing game. And as a matter of fact, he could have he could have had three passing touchdowns. He really could have. Although although most of their possessions ended in field goals, thank God the defense stepped up because then it would have been a blowout. And Phillip Rivers could have had three passing touchdowns. At least the Bears only lost by eight this game. But this is to this this loss reminds us that although you know although we were lucky in those first three games against good teams like the Colts, the Packers, the Saints, I can go on and on. The Seahawks, the 49ers, you're not going to win football games playing this terribly and having a lack of effort against those teams. You're not. Next, rushing. David Montgomery, 10 rushes, 27 yards. And listen to this. Let me do the math here. 27 divided by 10, that is 2.7. So on average, that is 2.7 yards per carry. What is going on? The offensive line, you know, I can blame Montgomery as well, but the offensive line played like absolute crap out there. Like an absolute travesty. And, you know, before... You know, after, you know, after David Montgomery, you know, after we go over the rushing stats, we're going to go over team stats, and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Rushing. I mean, for Indianapolis is rushing. Jonathan Taylor has 17 carries, 68 yards on a 4.0 average. They were trying to keep him in check all game. Well, not all game, but in the second half, they were really trying to keep him in check. Although they did give up a, a little bit, a lot of first downs. You know, they were they were trying to keep him in check in the second half to try and give us a chance to win this game. And, well, you see the results now. Receiving, Allen Robinson, seven catches, 101 yards, one touchdown. So, um, you know, he had a good game. But also, uh, Ryan Pace, when are you going to extend this guy? Please tell me. When are you going to extend him? He had, 100, he had 100 yards. Last week, and he had 100 yards this week. And he had receiving touchdowns last week and this week. So, why are, you not ex why are you not extending him? Why are you being cheap right now? If you're trying to win a title, right? If you're trying to win Super Bowls or trying to be a playoff contender, why are you, why are you being really cheap right now? I really can't. I can't stand Ryan Pace. Like, for since 2015... We've been on a downward spiral when it when it came to our team success. We were 18 and 34 for the past five years, and now since and now since we're supposedly playoff contenders, now you want to be cheap again. So what is this telling me? Are you trying to rebuild? Like, tell me, are you really trying to rebuild, or are you trying to be really cheap and let him go like Jerry Krause did to Phil Jackson and them on the Bulls? Other stats, Darnell Mooney, five catches, 52 yards. I thought the rookie had a solid game. He did have a touchdown, but I thought he had a solid game against that defense. Jimmy Graham, only four catches, 33 yards. We need more tight end production. I don't know how many times I have to stress this, but we need more tight end production. And the fact that he only got targeted five times, it was what really pisses me off. If you see that the cornerbacks are locking down your receivers throughout the most, most of the game, why don't you pass it to your tight end? My point exactly. Next, Anthony Miller, three catches, 16 yards. See, another one. This is another receiver that got locked down today. Like, what happened? Why was he not getting open? Only three catches for 16 yards. 
That sounds like a bust player to me. That sounds like a player who's come out as a bust from the NFL draft. That's what it sounds like to me. He got shut down by the number one defense in the league. And my question is, can he become consistently good after this bad performance? That's what I want to see. I, I hope. But after this and getting embarrassed off of national television, I, I almost have no confidence. But we still got... We still got 12 games left to go in a regular season. So I'm I'm trying I'm really trying to stay confident here for Anthony Miller. And then we go on Indianapolis side, we see Zach Pascoe, three catches, 59 yards. T.Y. Hilton, that speedster I was talking about in my prediction video, we held him to three catches and 29 yards. So good, good, but not good enough. Although he only had 29 yards, there were other receivers that were get, that were going down the field. Although they were not scoring touchdowns, they were getting first downs. And they were keeping the defense out there on the field and keeping them tired. And then the only touchdown reception of the game for Indianapolis was from Mo Ali Cox, a tight end. Only had one catch, 13 yards, and that one touchdown. So we shut him down pretty good. We did. And this is why I said the defense had a okay performance. I could have been really petty and said terrible, but I'm really going to say okay. Defense, Roquan Smith, 13 tackles, 11 solo, and three and a half tackles for loss. I thought he had a terrific game. There was an interception he caught in the end zone, but it was called back because his left foot was, was out of bounds on the left side of the end zone, so that's unfortunate, and the coach got three points off of that. Akeem Hicks, six tackles, two tackles for loss, zero sacks. We're going to get to the zero sacks parts later. But Akeem Hicks, Khalil Mack, Robert Quinn, they all had zero sacks combined. Khalil Mack, two tackles, nothing else. Oh, wait a minute. He dropped an interception, which went straight to his arms, which went straight to his arms. And guess what? And guess what? It cost the Bears great field position. So... I'm not putting him at fault there, but you got to make those catches, man. You really do. Robert Quinn, one tackle. Unproductive. Really unproductive. I'm, I'm, now I'm starting to show a little bit of concern because Robert Quinn, we paid him good money. We paid him real good money, and he only had one tackle yesterday. That's not going to cut it. Deshaun Gibson, nine tackles. Safety had a really good game yesterday. Jalen ja Jalen Johnson and Kyle Fuller, four tackles combined, two from each. That's not going to cut it. No, it's not. And like I said before, they both got dusted by, by their wide receivers of Indianapolis Colts. And they were simply not having a good game today. Yep, yesterday. And then there was really no real impact. And then the only sack we had was from Brent Urban, a backup defensive lineman for the Bears. And then for Indiana's defense, Anthony Walker, 11 tackles. Bobby Okariki, eight tackles. Man, I need to pronounce his name right. Julian Blackman, one interception, one tackle. That was the guy that picked off Nick Foles in the end zone, which got bobbled up in the air. It was honestly not a good pass from Nick Foles, and he's starting to remind me of Mitchell Trubisky when it comes to decision-making. DeForest Buckner, three tackles. He had an impact on, he has an impact on that defense, and although he only had three tackles, everything was going through him, and literally, I think that's who changed the outcome of the game. And then, when we go to our team stats, Indiana had 18 first downs, Chicago had 16. Total yards, Indiana 289 to Chicago's 269. Yards per play. Now, interestingly, they had 4.2 yards per play, and Chicago had 4.6 yards per play. And then for passing, Indiana had 186 yards passing, and Chicago had 241 yards passing. So what's going on here? For our sacks, Indianapolis allowed one sack for four yards loss, and Chicago allowed one sacks for eight yards loss. And then this is when I'm really pissed because rushing yards, 103 rushing yards compared to Chicago's 28 rushing yards. The offensive line played 
completely atrocious yesterday. David Montgomery struggled. Cordero Patterson struggled. Everyone struggled who tried to run the football for the Bears. They all struggled. And then rushing attempts. They gave up on the run game. 16 rushing attempts compared to Indianapolis's 38 rushing yards. No, not rushing yards, but rushing attempts. No, you're not winning football games like that. You're not. And then the last thing, the penalties. Now, Indianapolis, they had eight penalties for 76 yards total. And then Chicago, they gave up 103 yards based off of penalties. And speaking of speaking of penalties, Charles Leno. A holding call and then next thing you know, terrible pass blocking. Like, honestly, at this point, after this year, I'm saying get rid of him. Get rid of him. Let him go in free agency because he's not living up to expectations and he's not going to be protecting Nick Foles, who is not a scrambler, by the way. He's not a scrambler, unlike Mitchell Trubisky. So my point is, left tackle, he's got to go. And concluding my show, I would like to let would you guys leave a like, leave a comment. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'm gone. I'm not even going to say go, go Bears. I'm gone.